I've really liked the new Luke Skywalker X-Wing Starfighter mech, and you all seem to like the customs that I built for Rex's Y-Wing, and then we had the TIE Fighter, and then we had Obi-Wan's Delta and Anakin's ETA. So we're back again with a twist. I've mentioned quite a bit recently that Dune could have been the perfect Mandalorian Lego Star Wars wave. And I've been talking about a Bo Katan Gauntlet Microfighter. So I thought I'd add that to the Din Djarin N1 Microfighter mech and complete the wave. We've got the battle pack with the Mandalorian Warrior and the Night Owl. Then we've got Paz versus Moff Gideon, which is a cool set, a bit pricey, but you can definitely see where the money went with the part count. And these would have been my two sets that I'd have put alongside the other two for the perfect Mandalorian wave. So let's get right into it and take a look at these sets. And when I say take a look at these sets, it's because a lot of my custom mocks I've, well, custom mocks doesn't make sense. Mock stands for my own custom. So a lot of my mocks I create as if they were going to be put forward for possible Lego sets. So we do have minifigures with most of them, even some of the ships like the V-Wing. I give a few side characters because it's a mech and a micro, only one minifigure was needed. And we will take a look at, I think we're gonna actually start off with the micro fighter, Boat Catan's Gauntlet, because it's not made exactly how I think Lego would. I tried to add my own spin on this and quite literally the micro fighter does have this spinning mechanism, which is very similar to my Fang fighter. So let's grab that and compare the two. So for those of you who are perhaps new to the channel or weren't watching when I made this minifigure scale Fang fighter, it's actually an alternate build using no extra pieces from Bo-Katan's gauntlet playset. So I've turned the gauntlet into a Fang fighter and now we've gone even smaller with another gauntlet and they do look quite close together actually. I would love for Lego to supersize a micro, I guess it's not quite a micro fighter, perhaps a midi micro fighter and give us a fang fighter minifigure scale. I think this is about half the size of the one we got in the Fang Fighter Interceptor playset though. Fang Fighter's actually about a 130 scale and the Interceptor's not far off a 145 scale, which are the two popular scales LEGO like to use throughout LEGO Star Wars sets. And if you haven't seen that video where I go over which scale LEGO actually prefer, definitely give it a watch. So it's a bit of a numbers heavy video, but I really like how the Micro Fighter has worked mainly because it does look quite a bit like this Fang Fighter and the Gauntlet is just a really big Fang Fighter. When you think about it a little bit, Boat does sit down with her jetpack on, which I guess Lego would probably not include the jetpack, but it'd be quite hard to shape the ship around that. And we also have a gap in the middle there using a few fancy snot techniques and a few other parts not in their system format. And I couldn't, Forget the weapons on the wings here, which Lego would definitely include some stud shooters here. And they definitely could on the wings. You can see there is another two studs here. They could include the three long stud shooters and just remove the clip and the bar that I've added there. But I know we're not all fans of stud shooters, so I've gone with accuracy over playability. And this boat does size up to the other microfighters we've got recently. Not only Rex's Y-Wing microfighter, but also my alternate X-Wing microfighter that I made only using pieces from the Luke X-Wing mech. So if you didn't want the mech and perhaps wanted an X-Wing, or you could even take this as a base model and build a micro version of the X-Wing, like one of the poly bags that we've got. To be fair, we seem to get an X-Wing poly bag every year. So you could probably base it off one of them and have it on your display with your UCS Luke Skywalker using the mech and the key ring. But I really like how Bose Gauntlet has turned out. And now for the model you've probably been waiting for, and Probably the model you clicked on this video open to see. Let's take a look at Mando's N1 mech. If you are one of my many viewers that are enjoying these Starship, Starfighter mechs, or just ship mechs in general, then we are not alone. I had a look through some of the reviews on lego.com for Luke's mech and compared them to how the reviews for Boba, Vader, and the Stormtrooper were. A lot of people for the original three mechs 
which is buying the mechs for the minifigures and parting them out. A few of them even army building the Stormtrooper mech, but for Luke, they are not really fussed about the figure. Most people have a pilot Luke in their collection by now, but are purely buying it because of how good the mech looks. And I've carried that across with my TIE Fighter mech, with my Anakin mech, with my Kenobi mech, and now with my Mandalorian mech. In fact, this is the purest in the sense that usually purest custom is using official Lego pieces. But what I've actually done is broken down all the giant mech pieces into smaller pieces so that you can create each of these without even owning a mech. And perhaps the easiest thing to do is take a look at the arm and leg pieces, because as you can see, they aren't in solid and can open and shut. I have actually added a tile that enables them to lock in place for this Mandalorian mech, but you've already seen me build this back piece custom when I used to modify the Stormtrooper and the other mechs that we have got, and even rebuilding old ones like the Wolverine mech. So that does exist on the channel. This is a brand new technique. Initially, I was using the hinges for the movable arms, but with just a handful of pieces, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five pieces, you can create not only the shape, but the exact angle of them single piece Lego arms. And it saves you buying a load of mechs. I currently have now five mechs built. So I'm running low on all these arm pieces and decided to take it into my own hands quite literally and build the giant limb joints that Lego use using my own pieces. And this does also mean that if I wanted to, I can have the arms or legs straight out. But as I said, I've added a few pieces you can see there is this sloped wedge piece here, which just locks the arms into place, recreating that nice angle that Lego used. But also, I don't have to stick to the colors that Lego have provided, as I'm not sure they've made a light bluish gray version. And now I can have the arms and the legs in that light bluish gray color. This works with any colors. Perhaps you would like a blue version and they haven't done blue. They've probably done blue. But let's say they haven't done blue. You can use these pieces in blue. There's definitely a blue hinge out and about. Basically, any color hinges that exist, you can have arms and legs in that color. So if you'd like a video breaking down how I build the arms, legs, perhaps even the backs of the mechs and the front sides, which I also, again, used to do for colors I don't have the pieces of, and the Mandalorian is one of them. I don't have a light bluish gray version of the torso. I don't even think I have a dark bluish gray version of the torso. So I've brick built that as well. But now let's get into some of the finer details of the N1. The N1's somewhat known for its silhouette and that includes these two long spikes that come out the side of the wings. They are represented twice on this model. You can see them coming out of the arms as the arms do stick to the side. And then I've also got littler ones coming out of the back of the feet. I really liked what I did for Anakin's mech, including the feet as some of the wing shapes. So I have built the rounded off engine front and then included the spike out the back just to mimic that mech. And we've also got the legs, which are based around the turbines, a few exposed pipes and different elements by the joint, but nice and rounded off and also a little thicker than the other ones. Unlike the torso, which if we move this weapon out the way. We'll get into the weapon in a second because you might be a bit confused why it's looking like Mando's weapon, but there is a simple explanation. But the torso is nice and sleek shaped, just like the cockpit of the N1. I've actually removed this bomb bit here, which is so easy to do when you're not using the back of the mech and made it look a bit thinner with the round two by two with the hole in the middle representing the engine. And a few times throughout this mech, there have been different colors used on either side, a light gray and dark gray, just to show that it has been modified by the Mandalorian himself, who fits very snugly in this chess piece. And I do actually quite prefer this to the actual chess piece model that they've got because it fits flat with the Mandalorian's front and he can also fit his jetpack inside the mech. You can see he is wearing his jetpack, and I don't have the new version of the Mandalorian with the helmet. I am tempted to pick up that spider tank, and perhaps there's a few pieces in there that you could build your own spider tank mech for, but I haven't really seen it on any sows. You've probably also noticed the little bits of yellow, as well as some other detailing, but I think the big impressive feature of this is the giant pulse rifle. Well, 
it's not a pulse rifle. In the other mechs I have said about not including weapons that match the character, like with the Luke X-Wing mech, that comes with a giant saber, but I've been featuring the weapons based off the ships rather than the characters that pilot them. So this is not a pulse rifle, but is instead a proton torpedo rifle. Now, visually, they look the same, and that was just because I really wanted to make this pulse rifle. I mean, proton torpedo rifle for the Mando N1 mech, but instead of, I guess, firing pulses, it fires proton torpedoes, which the N1s, I can't exactly say they were known for, but we do see it in Phantom Menace and in all of the Lego games. And the pulse rifle, it matches to Mando. So it made sense to make a proton torpedo rifle in Mandalorian style. Perhaps he's modified some of the proton torpedoes from the ship to be able to fire from a massive pulse rifle in the Mandalorian fashion. And it just really works with this mech, mainly because the Mandalorian is piloting it but I think the weapon proportions are really, really cool. And my fiance actually come up with the idea for the end, which is really, really nice with the rest of the weapon. But I really like how this mech turned out. Let me know down in the comments what you think about it. And once again, thank you for making it to the end of the video. Don't forget to like on your way out and subscribe if you want to see more Lego because there is plenty to come for the rest of the year. We're approaching a year of daily upload so quickly and Time is just flying by. Don't forget to let me know if you would like to see a more in-depth video about how I build my custom mech parts because for a load of you who are into the mock building side of it, this could be really useful for making your own customs and perhaps I can even upload some free instructions somewhere for the base of the mech to just have a starting point to build on for anyone who struggles starting a build. But that is all for today. May the bricks be with you all, always.